Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the webinar entitled How SME Works with Barbara Arnold. My name is Lynn Autry Nkule, and I'm the Mentoring Call Program Leader for the Young Leader Professional Development Committee. As most of you know, the Young Leaders Committee hosts webinars once a month to cover a variety of topics that enable SME members to strengthen and expand their professional skill sets. And today, we have our SME past president that will be discussing her SME career through service to her local subsection and section, the Coal and Energy Division, the SME Board of Directors, and the SME Foundation Board of Trustees. Barbara will also be discussing her past involvement with the SME Foundation, as well as current in SME initiatives and opportunities. Now, I'll please ask all attendees to post your questions using the chat panel to our host, Jackie, and those will be discussed during the Q&A session at the end. I'll please like to turn the session to Barbara Arnold. Barb, please, would you uh, share your screen with us? Well, thank you so much, Lene Audrey, for the introduction. Um, as she mentioned, I, I served this past year as the SME president, and I just wanted to uh, give you some idea of my thoughts on how SME works. Um, and as an outline for my talk, I'll talk a little bit about my SME career, um, give you some highlights and initiatives from the past year, talk about the SME organization charts, um, Highlight the blue book, which you can find online. We used to always get that in print. And uh, talk about the chapter search, which is both for sections and student chapters. A little bit about how to get involved and then the benefits of SME membership so that you can pass that on to other people as well. I thought, though, that instead of talking just about my SME career, that I should probably tell you a little bit about my professional career highlights as well. I started um, at Penn State um, decades ago um, with a Bachelor of Science degree in mining engineering with a mineral processing option. Uh, then stayed and got a master's and a PhD in mineral processing where I focused on coal froth flotation. Uh, the Electric Power Research Institute actually sponsored my PhD research. So partway through my PhD research, they decided that they would hire me and before I finished my thesis. And uh, I did eventually finish it a couple of years later and uh, did get my PhD. I was at the Electric Power Research Institute uh, Coal Quality Development Center for 10 years. Uh, at some point in there, um, it actually changed to employee ownership uh, by a company called CQ Incorporated. We were all part owners of that company. Uh, in 1997, I left and formed a company called PrepTech. Uh, we offer engineering consulting services to coal companies for their coal cleaning plants. And I also sell equipment. Uh, we represent several companies, uh, international companies, as well as some U.S. companies. It's not just coal cleaning equipment, it's really mineral processing equipment. And as such, I probably had a little bit more, um, I won't say free time because there's really no free time, but I probably had a little more um, time to schedule my own schedule or to, I had more control over my own schedule so that all of my different volunteer activities could also fit into my schedule, including the things that I've done with SME. CQ Incorporated or the Coal Quality Development Center was in Homer City, Pennsylvania. And at that time, back in the 1990s, it would have been, we had the Appalachian Plateau subsection of the Pittsburgh section. And they asked me to serve as secretary, and I did. And I'm still secretary of the Appalachian Plateau subsection, even though we probably haven't had a meeting in. I'm going to say about 20 years. I, 
probably need to figure out how to transfer everything back to the Pittsburgh section because I still get the bank notices from time to time for that uh, subsection. Um, just haven't gotten around to it, um, thinking that perhaps the coal folks out in Indiana County or and Somerset County might still, Cambria County might still want to uh, do some things. But we've uh, really um, been focused on the things that the Pittsburgh section does. Um, while I was at CQ Inc., my, uh, our president, um, Clark Harrison, uh, was on the Coal Division Executive Committee Board. Um, he could not always attend the annual meetings, but the, the rule for me was if I wanted to go to the SME annual meeting, I had a project to pay for it. And I always found a project to pay for it and give a presentation. So with that, I have not missed an annual SME meeting since 1985. Um, so that's a probably a pretty long stint, and I'm sure there might be some others who can say that as well. But uh, in graduate school, I had the opportunity to go in 1983 to Atlanta, and then all of Frank Applin's graduate students went to the New York meeting in 1985, and then I've had the opportunity to attend every meeting since then. Um, showing up for the Coal Division Executive Committee meetings um, as Clark's representative, I was always there, people always saw me, and when the Coal and Energy Division, at the time it was the Coal Division, uh, changed their bylaws at, at one point, um, Chris Bice, who had been serving as secretary for a very long time, uh, some of you may know that name, uh, from Penn State and West Virginia University, um, he, um, they decided to move Chris up through the coal chairs, and they asked me if I would serve as the Coal and Energy Division Secretary. I had already served on a few technical and award committees by then, but in the, I'm going to say probably about 1994 or so, I started serving as the Coal Division Secretary, and right after that, they changed their bylaws and the structure of the division, and so I moved up through the coal division chairs as well. I've also been a member of the SME Pittsburgh Board of Directors. Currently, I serve on their awards committee and also on their annual meeting committee, which they do every year with the Pittsburgh Coal Mining Institute of America in October. This year, I'll just put a plug in it in for it. It's uh, October 23rd through the 25th uh, at South Point at the Hilton Garden Inn, and we're actually having an extra coal preparation day on October 23rd. Um, several uh, papers, and we're also going to be publishing a book through SME uh, on for that conference as the as the proceedings. Um, so I mentioned after I. Uh, we changed the division structure. I went through the coal division chairs, and that also included sitting on the old SME board of directors because I was the coal division chair. Now, we, at that time, back in the early 2000s, um, we did a big change to how the SME board uh, is configured. Previous to the current structure, we actually had every division and every region represented on the board of directors. Those meetings were packed with about 30 people, and it was very difficult to really get a lot of things done, um, uh, very quickly anyway. So when Barb, Barb Phyllis became president, she actually set up an executive uh, committee of the board, and I ended up sit, um, staying on as chair for an extra year because the person following me could uh, not continue in that role, and so I served on the first uh, executive committee uh, under Barb Phyllis for that. Um, the structure changed, um, and we set up a nominating committee, and I was actually serving on that first uh, new nominating committee. Um, 
about, I'm going to say about 2008 or 9, George Luxbacher, who is then the president of SME, who I also followed George through the coal and energy division uh, chairs, um, appointed me as the vice president of the SME Foundation, knowing that I had some fundraising experience um, with some things that I had been doing with Penn State and the Alumni Association there, uh, both at the New Kensington campus and in the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences. Um, one, I had been elected or appointed as vice president, but about that same time then I was elected to the new structure SME Board of Directors. I served uh, as the chair of one of the strategic committees for one year and then um, as I served my two-year SME Foundation president role in 2011 and 2012, uh, those were my last two years on the SME Board of Directors. Um, with the, I'm sorry, on the SME Foundation Board, oh no, on the SME Board of Directors, that's correct. And then you serve as the SME Foundation past president for two years. So I was involved with the foundation um, directly through about 2014. Um, in 2015, Steve Gardner approached me at the mid-year meeting and said I had been nominated to serve as the SME president uh, for 2018, and I accepted. A lot of people, it's kind of interesting just knowing the process because a lot of people actually have to ask other people <laughs> whether or not um, it would be okay to serve. And um, I didn't have to ask anybody, so I just told Steve right then and there, oh, sure, Steve, I can do that. So it's not just a one-year term. Um, starting in a, probably the fall or so of 2016, um, we started having meetings with the president-elect and the current president and the past president because we like to keep this big um, rolling, um, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, just just so that everybody knows what's happening or what has happened, we get the president-elect and the president-elect designate involved fairly early. So when I'm showing you what I did this past year, keep in mind that everything for about at least a year and a half or so before 2018, um, I was already gearing up to for this presidential role. One of the best things that uh, Tim Arnold told me at the first meeting was make a list of all the topics that you want to have in your mining engineering columns because that's a monthly thing that you have to write. And so I did that and so it made it a little easier for me to actually uh, write all of those columns than this past year. But in addition to uh, traveling to a variety of conferences, I was at the Canadian Institute of Mining uh, um, annual meeting, the um, extraction conference, um, went to the Twin Cities section meeting, of course, the Pittsburgh section meeting and gave a presentation there. St. Louis, um, oh, there's, it was, seemed like every month there was somewhere to go. I think it was only July of last year that there was not an SME trip. Um, so it really ended up, you know, you had to plan very well. Uh, your schedule because I still have had work that had to be done and I sort of joked that well at least I can uh, work second shift I mean I there were numerous days when I would do something for SME during the day and still be working at night for prep tech things or I would have been writing my column or doing something like that in the evening or if I traveled to a conference and had a break that's often when I would uh, go back to my hotel room and write my column because I was inspired by something. We had several presidents meetings and by presidents I include the past president, the current president, the president-elect, and sometimes the president-elect designate. Uh, we met several times during the year. 
You also have to develop some initiatives or at least a theme for your year. Um, you set up, um, you, you're involved with the budget, um, but also more directly with the executive director goals and the review of the executive director. So I had a huge spreadsheet of things for Dave Kanegi to do. And by the end of the year, we had most of those things checked off or in progress. Um, so we had, a, I think, a very successful year last year. But there's all sorts of extraneous things that need to be addressed from uh, issues that uh, members bring up to um, some, there were a couple of things that uh, people were concerned with as far as um, diversity goes and those types of things. So we've been working on a bunch of different things uh, related to those extraneous things that need to be addressed as uh, president. Um, again, I mentioned the monthly mining engineering columns. Uh, we ha continued uh, the quarterly calls with the SME local section leadership. Uh, those are great meetings. Um, if any of you are involved with the local section, I encourage you, uh, even if you're not a leader uh, when it, in the, one of the leadership positions, to um, you know see if you can attend one of those um, and or at least get on that call list. Um, those, in addition to being very informative with the quarterly calls. There are also some training things that Rachel Grimes does for the section leadership, and those are, are very effective. They're all online uh, on the SME website. Uh, everything's reported so that you can go back and read those things or like I should listen to them. Um, you have to run the board of directors meetings, and that's what I mean, I've been running meetings for a very, very long time, so that just sort of came natural to me. Um, I had previously served as the um, Mortar Board National College Senior Honor Society president, president of the uh, graduates of Earth and Mineral Sciences Alumni Society at Penn State, my local alumni society. So running meetings, understanding Robert's rules, all of those kinds of things are, are very natural for me. So running a meeting was not that big of a deal, but setting the agendas and those types of things, making sure that we had all of the issues covered, um, that took some time. And so just making sure that the board was informed of things that were going to be coming up that was all important. And as I mentioned, um, not just traveling to conferences, but speaking at section meetings. And then perhaps the biggest duty is um, speaking at the annual meeting, at the keynote session, as well as the, at the banquet on Wednesday night, where you get to do the happy duty of presenting all of the awards to everyone. And now as past president, I get to be the liaison to the young leaders. Um, I chair the local section grants committee. So any of you folks who are out there who are involved with the local section grants, um, that's going to be coming up fairly soon. Uh, we'll be, I think it's in July or August that the section grants folk committee will meet and then we present the slate of um, folks that will receive uh, the grants uh, to the SME board at the mid-year meeting, which will be held in Vail, Colorado, um, September 29th through the 1st, I believe is the, are the dates for that, through October 1st. Um, I also will be chairing some awards committees just by virtue of being past president, which I didn't find out until after I <laughs> became past president, but we will work on that. I uh, nominated myself uh, to chair an ad hoc committee to celebrate the AIME 150th celebration. That's going to happen in 2021. And we have a number of things that we'll be doing special at um, our SME annual meeting to celebrate AIME's 150th, including a big cake at the uh, in the exhibit hall and some things like that. 
uh, one of the issues, one of no, no, issues, one of the initiatives that I was, um, uh, that I'm still trying to flesh out for the society is about micro credentialing, and that would be to have um, either online or in person courses on some professional development skills for students as well as for young professionals. Um, the American Institute of Chemical Engineers received a grant to set up a website to do something very similar to that. And SME's Tara Davis is on that committee and she's keeping track of uh, what needs, what's going to be happening uh, with that micro-credentialing because I'm still thinking that if they're not going to have the kind of program that we want, um, that we might be doing some things our, ourselves. So for those of you that had offered to serve on an ad hoc committee for that uh, micro-credentialing opportunity, just stay tuned and uh, we might be coming back to you uh, for at least some suggestions for topics for those um, for those courses. And of course, um, duties as assigned, uh, that's always part of, of your volunteer roles, uh, especially when you get to be past president, people start uh, putting you on ad hoc committees all the time. And uh, um, there's some things that I'm following up with um, on the health and safety committee with John Mansanti, the past past president. Um, uh, we're, you know, we're, we've got our strategic planning session. The uh, SME board of directors and a few other folks will be meeting in Chicago on Monday and Tuesday. I think a bunch of you probably have had uh, some input into uh, the questioning for the strategic plan, and we'll be meeting to develop that uh, in conjunction with the RETC conference in Chicago. Um, and then you'll be hearing more about it uh, once we get to the point of announcing all of the new goals um, sometime in uh, probably right after our mid-year meeting so that they would be implemented next year. Uh, in 2018, what I did was try to highlight uh, our vision, which is to be the premier resource and advocate for the mining community and our core values, innovation, professional excellence, and number first. Uh, so a few things that we did for innovation. Um, we had the very first Robert E. Murray Innovation Award and Scholarship awarded at the 2018 annual meeting. And we had Thrive 2018. 18, that was a new mining innovation conference. I had uh, speakers focused on health and safety, mining and processing. That was held in conjunction with our mid-year in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hugh Miller, uh, the current SME president, will be having a Thrive conference um, following the Vail annual meeting or mid-year meeting uh, October second, and then there is a field trip on October 3rd. We had about 179 folks registered for that and 19 sponsoring companies. Um, I got very good feedback for it, so we will be continuing to do Thrive um, at, in conjunction with the mid-year meetings, as, as long as that uh, is very viable for us. Um, professional excellence, we certainly continued the, our success with the PhD fellowship and career grants uh, that the foundation offers. Uh, two PhD candidates received their degrees and two professors have received tenure. Um, the SME Resources and Reserves Committee. Um, and we're hoping that the test will be held up to four times in 2019. So this is a very good opportunity for those uh, folks in the safety area to become a certified mine safety professional. The uh, health and safety division is also looking at some other opportunities uh, for that, um, for certifications for safety professionals. Uh, we also uh, established the Journal of Mining, Metallurgy, and Exploration. I call that the next best thing to onemine.org. This is available to all members electronically with no additional charge. 
There are six print issues per year. Um, and in the first three months, over 100 papers were submitted for peer review. Mary Poulton is serving as our executive editor, and you see our editors in chief uh, listed there. Um, this gives our authors an expanded reach to 7,000 libraries and 20 million desk desktops worldwide. Uh, we're partnering with Springer, uh, one of the major pu um, technical publishers um, in the world. Uh, we did a member satisfaction study. Satisfaction increased, we do this every three years, satisfaction increased 3% from 2015. Um, there's a, such a thing called a net promoter score. It remained the same at 38. And I did give some more details, or we did have some more details at our Thursday board meeting at the annual meeting. Um, we had several new websites created this past year. Um, there, we now have, and I'll show you in a moment, the professional section and student chapter search feature on the website. Um, there's a new portal for awards and scholarship applications and for their review. Um, we did uh, complete a website engagement study in the past year and we're hoping to move that forward and do some changes, much needed changes, to our um, website. Just the other day I noticed that the 2020 um, annual meeting wasn't featured prominently in our calendar and so Dave Kennedy's having that fixed. Um, our uh, SME community um, is recognized as a top 125 design out of the 1,000 higher logic websites. So that's a big deal for the SM, SME community. Um, we uh, have several other uh, members, uh, or member organizations uh, joining onemind.org. Um, 133,000 over that uh, documents are available uh, within OneMind. If you haven't used that for your research or for just to find out some new thing about something you think you know about, um, that's a huge um, uh, benefit to membership. I am on one line at probably at least once a month, if not more often. A little bit about the SME organization chart. The SME board of directors um, oversees uh, our executive director, Dave Kanegi. We have a, a board uh, with six members at large. Uh, the past president serves ex officio. The current, that means that I don't get to vote, um, the current president and then the president-elect are also voting members. The executive director is also ex officio on the board. Uh, the executive director has an executive assistant uh, and then the director of finance and administration and director of operations. And they oversee any number of these different uh, activities that staff uh, performs. We also have the SME Foundation and the SME PE program. They also report directly to the executive director. Whoops. So we have members that uh, should have input to the board of directors and I would encourage any of you to, if you've got some ideas, if there are, um, questions, concerns, uh, please bring those to any member of the board of directors, um, ideas for new programs. Um, the board of directors then oversees the executive director and we have strategic committees that report uh, to us as well as the functional working groups. You'll see on the functional working groups, divisions and some other special interest groups, the local sections, um, educational committees, uh, the technical media committees, audit committee, meeting planning and programming, all of those folks we call functional working groups, and then the strategic committees of nominating finance, structure and governance, products and services, outreach, educational and professional development. All of those um, strategic committees 
uh, when the nominating committee um, looks at um, how uh, looks at appointing people to those committees as well as to the board of directors and as SME president, we look at the past um, work of the individuals that have been nominated. And people who have served in their local sections as well as in the divisions and some of the uh, functional working groups, some of those other committees, uh, we give some priority, I guess you would call, to those folks to serve on those strategic committees. Um, so it's, and generally, if you've served within a division and within several of the strategic committees, then we're looking at, oh gosh, these people should be on the board of directors. And generally, if you've served on the board of directors, that's how we're looking at, you know, who would be a, an outstanding candidate for president. So that's sort of how the overall organization works. You know, I would suggest, and I think on one of my next charts here, oh, I know what, I'll, I'll, I'll get to this, get back to that topic in a minute. Um, I did want to highlight the blue book as part of this. And so all of those people who serve on functional committees um, or functional working groups or on strategic committees, on the board, et cetera, they're all in the leadership directory. And you can find that on the website. We used to call that the blue book. I actually have the 2018 one printed out as a hard copy. It's just easier for me to do that. It's a little cumbersome to uh, sometimes just grab the website and uh, or get to the website and find it, but it's actually fairly easy to find. It's uh, just one um, layer down from under membership as the blue book. So this tells you who is in all of those committees. There's your Young Leaders Committee. Um, and really, those are the people that you want to contact if you want to get involved. I suggest that getting involved with a local section is huge, and that would be a fabulous thing for anyone to start um, with, even before you get involved nationally. Um, on the homepage for smenet.org, you'll find this chapter search function up at the top. It's for both sections and student chapters. Um, if you click on that, you can view all of them, or you can say what country, what state, if there's a zip code, they tell you uh, where all these um, local sections are. And if you say everything, it brings up a map where we have uh, members and or sections or student check sections, student chapters. And then you can click on the different areas and find those folks. And then you can also find out information about contacting the leadership in those areas to get involved. Local sections are always looking for people to help. Student chapters are always looking for speakers. Um, so I would encourage anyone to get involved that way as maybe just an initial way to get involved with SME. Um, but how to get involved? As I mentioned, attend local section meetings. Um, attend the division meetings at the annual meeting. Those are all open. Um, if you show up often enough, people are going to say, hey, do you want to do something? Do you want to be on a committee? Um, volunteer to speak at meetings and at conferences. Volunteer for committee work. Uh, but when you volunteer, I just want to stress that you're going to be committing your time, your talent, and at some point, Someone's going to ask for money, and so you're going to be uh, uh, also donating your treasure. Um, but most importantly, you have to do what you say you will do. Communicate to the leadership. If something does get in the way, work, for example, uh, let leadership know that you can't complete your assignment because they're counting on you. Either at, tell leadership or tell staff, whoever you're working with, that you can't complete your assignment. That's okay to say no, or that you can't do it. But because those people are counting on you to get that work done, 
But if they know that you can't, aren't going to do it, then they can find another person who can, or they'll just, they, you know, they're not going to be blindsided when deadlines are, are approaching and things aren't completed. And again, it's, it's okay to say no, because you need to set your priorities and understand your time commitments. So if there are, you know, if you think you want to uh, be a member of an, a division executive committee, you need to understand the time commitments for that. Again, if you're going to do something, if you say you're going to do something, you really need to follow through. Just a few of the benefits of SME membership from the slides that um, the SME membership group will uh, really um, hand out to to uh, be talked about at local sections. SME is focused on you, the member. So we want to foster your professional growth, support you, um, expand your access to industry resources, and offer you some benefits and affinity services. Um, hope you can grow professionally through conferences, through webinars like this. Also through participation in divisions, um, We'd like you to, you know, make sure that you're helping with the technical support for community for our committees. Um, create meetings. There's there's no reason why you can't create a topical meeting on a particular subject. Um, maybe a seminar on a particular subject or a symposium. Um, bring those. Um, ideas to the divisions and they can help you with that. Play an active role uh, within the division governance and gain recognition as a volunteer, as a presenter, as an author. Um, we have an online community. We hope that that helps you make connections. Um, you know, can definitely talk, uh, engage with folks from around the globe. Um, sections are also a very good place to make those connections, enhancing your professional development uh, locally where you are. I know the Pittsburgh section uh, tries to latch on to any of the young leaders within our area. Um, Mining Engineering Magazine, definitely stay current. With that, you get an SME e-newsletter um, each oh, I don't know, every few weeks or so, get some timely announcements about conferences, check the website every once in a while as well. And then one of the new um, benefits is the expanded peer-reviewed journal, free access for everybody. OneMind.org, also free access to research, um, tons of information in there. And of course, the SME bookstore, um, a lot of eBooks to be, um, uh, that are available now, as well as um, the uh, hard copy books as, uh, that some of us still like to have on our shelves. Help move mining forward. Uh, anytime that you see a post on your face on Facebook that's mining related, or or go to some of the mining sites and like them, because then you can start sharing the good stories that they post. National Mining Association has several different um, Facebook pages. Um, the Minerals Education Coalition from SME does. Alaska Coal Producers has a great one. Or Alaska, yeah, the Nevada Mining Association. There are a bunch of them out there that have great websites. Help move mining forward by sharing that information. And we also, um, you know, participate in the programs like Move Mining each year. Member discounts. Um, we Each member gets a 25% discount on anything through the SME store. And for those of you who need professional liability insurance, you can get discounts through the um, through our member benefits. Um, Workman's comp is also offered and also a 401k savings plan. Those are some things that um, some folks have taken advantage of. I know I get my professional liability insurance uh, through the SME connection. There are some group insurance plans, a worldwide travel program discounts, and an SME credit card for those of you who are trying to establish credit. Um, I have 1245, and so that means to me that we have 15 more minutes for uh, 
our question and answer period. So Jackie, if you've got questions, um, I'd be happy to answer. We have, we have a, a, a few questions. I would like to uh, remind our audience that you can use the chat panel to ask your questions. And I would like to let you know that uh, we have been recording Barb's presentation. And before we post it on the SME YouTube channel, we'll do a little bit of editing and take out the, um, the few blips that we, that we experienced. Uh, Barb, our first question, I think you have already answered. Uh, in your uh, slide about the Blue Book and how to get involved. The question is, why is it difficult to get involved in the technical sessions? There aren't any clear guidelines, uh, for example, to serve as a co-chair for a technical session. What would you suggest? Well, most of those appointments are made through the division uh, committees. And so if you want to get involved as a co-chair for one of those technical sessions, I would suggest that you show up at a division meeting and let them know that you're interested because that, that to me, let the division leadership know that you're interested. They're the ones that are sort of the gatekeepers of who those people are. Great, thank you. Um, the next question isn't necessarily uh, an SME question, but mm -hmm. our attendee would like to know if you know what is needed to become a, a qualified person in OR reserves. Um, there's, a, there's a specific criteria for our registered members, um, and so I would suggest that you look at that information on the website uh, and see if you qualify that way. Um, you do fill out an application to become a registered member and the committee, there's a registered member committee that I believe meets monthly from what I understand um, that reviews all the applications and uh, determines if you have those qualifications. Um, so I check out the registered member application to see if you can, if you qualify that way. Great, thank you. Next question uh, first starts with a comment saying, thank you for the amazing presentation. Uh, the question is, when you take additional responsibilities like SME president or any other leadership positions within SME, how do you manage your social, professional, and personal life? Well, <laughs> this past year was a little challenging. Um, I have a huge calendar that is in my office, uh, an entire year, yearly planner, and everything goes on it. And that's, I mean, I don't have a separate calendar for social or volunteer or meetings for work. I have everything on the same calendar. And, um, you know, last year got to be a little challenging in, say, I'm going to say May, April and May. Um, there's a lot of SME travel. Uh, for the first time in my entire life, I actually had to hire somebody to cut my grass. Um, so that was a, that was a, a first for me. Um, I, I'm really only just now, um, what I've been telling people, I'm finally reclaiming my weekends. Um, there was a lot of uh, work pent up uh, that had to be done in April and May of this year. Um, and finally reclaiming those weekends. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm single, so I don't have a family to address, though I do have some aging parents and I, um, if I'm home, I'm with them every Sunday. So that's sort of a, a you know, don't tread on my Sundays kind of thing. I, I keep that to myself. Um, that's, you know, it's, it's just a matter of priorities. And that's, that's the big thing. You have to know what your priorities are. Um, even at going forward, I'm looking at perhaps some changes to what I am doing professionally and 
trying to figure out how do I keep my Sundays with my parents and, um, you know, not not uh, <laughs> um, tread on my Saturdays. <laughs> so um, I, I, you know, today I have this, I've got a doctor's appointment this afternoon in Pittsburgh. And then there's the SME Pittsburgh section meeting this evening. Tomorrow morning, we have a, a joint uh, conference meeting with PCMIA. I need to visit a customer at one o'clock in the entirely opposite direction. And then, as I mentioned, I volunteer with Mortarboard, National College Senior Honor Society. I'm on their foundation now. And I've got a conference call at six o'clock in the evening. So it's like, okay, tomorrow's shot. Um, but Friday, one of the the big fundraisers, one of the places to be uh, in this, in my area anyway, is the uh, party at Penn State New Kensington. It's really an art party, and so that'll be a very fun event. So, and you just have to have your priorities set and um, have, keep a big calendar. I I don't just keep the calendar on my wall. My um, my day planner. Uh, is filled with every activity. If something goes on one calendar, it's on the other. Plus there's the old Google calendar too. And I got all my emails with me on my, yes, I still have a Blackberry, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worn out just listening to you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next comment is wondering if you can elaborate a little bit more about the role of the foundation within SME. Sure. Um, the SME Foundation uh, raises funds for some very specific programs, um, and as well as general funds as well. Um, they fund our Minerals Education Coalition. They fund the PhD fellowships and career grants. Um, there's a program called Miners Give Back. Uh, they fund the ABET accreditation activities and uh, the SME professional engineering uh, registration uh, activities. I've probably missed something along the lines, but I think those are the major things. Um, an active board of about, I think it's 24-ish members. Um, they're divided into a, a corporate um, fundraising committee and an individual fundraising committee. Um, really looking at uh, funding all of those programs and some of those are very important to SME uh, as well as to the industry at large. Um, as When something comes up that is identified, especially like the gap with the PhDs um, staying and teaching at the university, um, we have stepped up and found a way to fund that. And so as we go forward, I you know, I think that those are going to be very important roles that the foundation plays. There may be some other things in the future um, that need to be funded, and we'll ask that the SME Foundation to see if they can play a role in that as well. Great, thank you. Our next question is, um, hmm, what what are the steps to create a regional SME in an, uh, an international country? Okay. They're actually, um, if we can get your email, we can, we can have Rachel Grimes, uh, the local section coordinator, send you that. Uh, there's actually uh, several documents. Um, you have to have a certain number of members um, established in, the, in that area. Um, and then I think it's 10, uh, so it's not overly um, overly ambitious, but um, you also have to have officers and you need to have a set of bylaws that are then approved by the SME board. So it, it's not um, not overly detailed, but you know check we can if Jackie, if there's an email with that, or you know who the contact is, we can send them that particular information. Yes, I do have his contact information. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Uh, next question. 
how do you handle when SME publishes or becomes involved with a position or organization that you do not support? I'm not quite sure. I don't know that we've ever run into anything like that. Um, there's, uh, I can think of some companies that have approached us to sponsor some things. It, just to give you an example, that usually comes to um, Dave Kanegi first. I mean, he's usually the one that's approached by those types of uh, activities or, or organizations. Um, and he typically brings it to the president. If the president doesn't want to handle it individually, then it's generally open to all of the presidents. We have a discussion. Um, and, um, you know, if we want more information, we will engage with that, that particular group. If uh, we say, no, this doesn't fit with our uh, strategic plan, with our goals, then we'll say, no, thank you. So I, I hope that answers that. I believe it does. Thank you. Um, a, a comment on how to get involved in technical sessions from one of our attendees. He reminds us that if you can attend the uh, unit committee meeting for your division of interest during the annual meeting, that would be helpful. And also to call staff member or contact staff member Tara Davis who yep. um, organizes and manages all of the programming. Yep, that's a great idea. Perfect. Um, next question, uh, not necessarily about uh, SME, but is wondering now with the rare earth shortage issue uh, resulting in trade wars causing an a large impact on the economy. Do you think it's a good time for the U.S. Bureau of Mines to be resurrected? Do you think it would be possible? Um, actually, the Department of Energy is doing a lot on uh, the rare earths. Um, they're funding uh, quite a bit of activity um, with universities as well as with corporations. They've had a number of workshops on the topic. Um, I think they're doing a good job on that. Um, uh, you know, the uh, United States Geological Survey is still very active in identifying a lot of those resources as well. So between the Department of Energy and the Department of Interior, I think we probably have a lot of that taken care of. I'm not sure that we need another agency at this time. The Bureau of Mines was, um, you know, uh, and actually a lot of that rare earth work is happening uh, in conjunction with coal at the moment. Um, so we've already got folks looking at uh, the coal mines from safety standpoint, from environmental standpoint. Um, not quite sure until we get really moving on it, um, how we can, um, how we would get another agency involved. So maybe at some point there's a reason for it, but I think we're, we're okay at the moment. Great, thank you. We have time for one more that involves a comment as well as uh, uh, asking you to expound upon, he says, great talk. Again, thanks. And could you also remind anyone that is interested in volunteering for SME that it requires time away from an employer uh, and you really cannot pursue a lot of SME activities without that support? That's absolutely correct. Um, you know, if you you know, if, you're, if you want to come to the annual meeting, that's several days off. Um, if you're, you know, maybe they require you to do a presentation or to be a committee chair uh, to even go to meetings. So, you know, you're going to have to really speak with your supervisor or your, um, I mean, I, I've, you know, my rule, my, the rule that that they set for me at, when I was at CQ was if, if you want to go to the annual meeting, you've got to be given a paper and it has to be paid for by whoever's uh, funding that research for you. So I just made sure that it, it happened that way. 
until I got on my own and I could say, yeah, I'm going to the annual meeting. So, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. You definitely need to have the support of, of your supervisor. Great. Thank you. Thank you again, Barb, for sharing your expertise with us. Uh, our audience is sending all kinds of uh, comments saying very good and and congratulations on the, the fine work that you've done uh, with all of your volunteer work with SME. And I'd like to remind our audience that it is the um, uh, webinar was being recorded. It will be posted on the SME YouTube site in the near future. And um, Barb, would you have any final comments for our audience before we close the session? Well, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk with you all today and to uh, uh, thank the young leaders for hosting this. Um, thank you, Jackie and uh, Lynn Audrey for the introductions and thanks for the questions and answers today or the question period so that that was great thanks and thank you for the answers sure. great thank you everyone uh, for joining us today this ends today's session and uh, be sure to join us next month for another session from uh, Joe Driscoll have a good day